So storing data in text files isn't really something I want to do much these days. If I've got something like a web page uh, with a small amount of data to save, I might put that in a cookie. And if I've got more data to save, then I might put it in a database so I can use SQL to query and sort that information. But being able to store things in a text file is a common requirement of a GCSE coursework task. So we'll have a look at that now. Um, there are three uh, basic stages. The first thing we need to do is open the file and we use uh, a variable. I'm using f, that seems to be quite common, but it doesn't need to be f. Uh, we can't use file because it's uh, a keyword, but um, we can use any other variable name we like. Um, so there's an open command and that takes two arguments. First of all, we take the, have the name of the file. So I'm going to store some text in a file called students.txt. Remember that it's useful to put the um, extension on the file name in case I want to use other applications such as um, Notepad in this case uh, to open the file. And then we've got a thing called a mode. So when we open a file we can open it for reading, R, we can open it for writing, W, or we can open it for appending, uh, which is A. And these are all text files. So the difference between appending and writing is whether the file gets overwritten. So W will overwrite the file, A uh, append will add to the end. Um, so these are text files, as I said, if we want to write a binary file, so if we're storing something like a picture, uh, then we add B to that. So uh, AB to append to a binary file, uh, WB to write a binary file, RB to read a binary file. And finally, apparently you can put a plus in there, although I've never used it, so R plus apparently allows you to open a file for reading but also to append to it. So I'm going to create um, this file. So I'm going to write to it so it doesn't exist currently. In Replit on the left hand side you can see the files involved in your project so I'll have opened that pane this time. So this um, opens the file. We need to remember to close it at the end. Not closing the file can cause problems so I'm just going to put that close in there now so that I don't forget. So uh, f.close or whatever variable name you've used uh, closes the file again. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to, um, I'm going to have a, what I'm going to do is I'm going to have a tuple with some names in it. And I'm going to loop through, just give me a quick way of, um, a quick name, a quick way of um, having uh, multiple names. Okay, so I've got some names in there. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to loop through those names. So I'm going to say for n in student. And I'm going to write those into the file. So the command for writing text to the file is f.write. And then I'm going to write n. So n, will, we're going to iterate through the tuple. n will become each student name in turn. Tin, then Fred, then Sarah. And we're going to write each of those to the file. So I'm going to run my program now. So it's run, it doesn't, hasn't displayed anything on the right hand side, but we can see the file has been created. And in Replit, we can click on that to see the contents. So the first thing we notice is when we write into the file that it all gets read or uh, all gets written on the same uh, line of the file. So if you opened it in Notepad, uh, for example, it would look the same as that. So if I don't want that to happen, then uh, what I can do is I can just append uh, or add, concatenate uh, a new line character to the end. So I can do something like that. I can write the name of the student plus backslash n uh, to start a new line. So if I run this now and have a look in my file, there we go. Each name is on a new line. Notice it overwrote what was there before because I'd used w for write. Um, if I put in some different names now, so Tom, uh, Dick, and Harry, if I change that to a, it will append, so it will put these names on the end. So I'll run that now. Have a look in my file, and we can see that we've got one long list. So the difference between a and w is whether it replaces the file or adds to the end. So I've got some stuff in my file now. What about if I want to get it out again? So it's quite useful to be able to see uh, what's in my file. And there are three commands uh, for getting that out. There is uh, read, read line and read lines. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to, uh, that information is already in there now. So I'm going to replace my program. I'm going to open it for reading. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to 
So contents equals f, so still got the same file name, f.read. So what, what read does is it reads the entire contents of the file into the um, variable. So if I print contents in, in my program now, we'll be able to see uh, what that does. So I'll run my program, and we can see that it's, it's taken the whole file in one go. It's read it into my contents, and when I um, print that out, basically it looks the same as the contents of the file. So that's probably the easiest thing if you want everything in one go. What about uh, if you don't? Well, other options are um, read line. So read line just reads one line from the file. So if I run that, um, it'll just read Tim, which is the first line from the file. So I can um, say, um, so I'll, I'll need to update my program slightly. So I'll say, um, so contents, yep. Yeah, so uh, what I'll say is while contents, so when you reach the end of the file, contents becomes kind of blank or undefined. Um, so I'm going to print uh, contents and then I'm going to move on to the next line, which is basically just a, a copy of that. So if I run that now, what we see is it r runs through the file. Now it's because it's reading the uh, backslash n, we get the gap between them, but it's, it's, we can see that it's, it keeps going till it reaches the end of the file. So we can read it a line at a time using a read line. Um, however, if you want to do that sort of thing, it might be easier to use read lines. So what read lines does with an S um, is it reads the contents a line at a time, but then it puts each line into a list as a separate item. So if I run that, um, we can see that the contents becomes um, this list and each row in my file, Tim, Fred, Sarah, Tom, Dick, Harry, becomes an item in my list. Notice that it also uh, brings in the backslash n. So that's uh, not particularly friendly, but we can um, trim that off. So that's my, that's my list called contents. Um, you can use uh, list comprehension, for example. So you could do this sort of thing. You could do uh, i dot strip. So strip uh, um, is a bit like trim in other languages. If you've used that, it removes any white space, including backslash characters. And um, for i in contents, so that's the list comprehension. That's a very Pythonic way of doing it. But you could just loop through and strip each item. So you can you can do that sort of thing to take off the uh, the backslash ends. So. That's uh, been able to open a file. So open, uh, different modes, read, write, append, and, and then reading it in either the whole file in one go, one line at a time, or reading each individual line as a separate list element. And then we can do with that uh, whatever we wish wish. So when, you, when you're creating a program and you're thinking about saving the information in a file, what you really need to think about is what you want the contents of the file to look like. So you don't um, just have to write text in there, you can format that information so you could add additional things. So you could create a CSV file for example by putting in uh, commas or you could create an XML file by putting in um, tags or in fact you could even create something like a, a web page so you could put the HTML tags in save your file with the name uh, .html and it would open as a web page in your browser so think about what your contents want to look like and then pick uh, the way of writing and reading to and from the file that would best suit that particular application